Good afternoon everyone, my name is Lewis, welcome back to the channel. I hope I find you all in good health. Now today is a special occasion. Um, the reason behind the special occasion is, is that this video is to do with a competition which is happening at this moment in time. The competition is called Show Me Your Crown Jewels and this has been organised by the Greater Vinyl Community and uh, one person in particular which is the 45 RPM Audiophile YouTube channel. So thank you sir for organising this competition, it's been fun. And I'd also like to give a shout out to one of my channel subscribers who encouraged me to take part in this competition and throw my two cents worth in. Um, Mr. Henri Junefil. So Henri, thank you very much for bringing the competition to my attention. Um, I will throw my two cents worth in and hopefully you will enjoy my choices. Um, so the four categories in this competition are the best sounding LPs in your collection, in your opinion, the best sounding live recordings in your collection, your most valuable LP, and lastly, um, what LP um, would you like, either own or have heard, would you like to see reissued or upgraded to a audio file standard, if that's relevant. Okay, to start off with, um, in the category of best sounding LPs in my collection, I would go with the 1966 release by Dwayne Shorter, and it's called Speak No Evil. That is a phenomenal album. Um, I would encourage anyone to, to get this album. Um, if you like jazz, this should be in your collection. Um, it's a no-brainer as far as I'm concerned. Um, have a look into, listen to either Witch Hunt or Speak No Evil, and that will give you a good idea of how good this album is. Um, yeah, superb. It's in my top 10, I think, of all time albums in my collection anyway. My second choice today is a bit more Frontier, um, but if you see my channel, that's kind of how I am anyway. Um, this is a 1971 release by a Hosan Yamamoto and it's called Beautiful Bamboo Flute. There you go, that's a beautiful cover there. Um, yeah, this album is completely underrated. Um, there is so much to unearth in the compositions featured. Um, it's an event, um, it's an experience. I would say to anyone, have a listen to this and you will it's going to blow your socks off how good this actually sounds. So yeah, check it out. Yeah, it's one to savour. Now, from the category of uh, best sounding live LPs, I have chosen the following. The first is a 1966 uh, release. Um, and it's called Sinatra at the Sands with Count Basie. And of course, it's by Frank Sinatra. There you go. Yeah, as you can see, it's well worn. I absolutely adore this album. Um, I'm a bit meh with Frank. I'm a bit hit and miss with him. But in terms of, for me, this is his outstanding contribution to, to music. Um, yes, I want you to listen carefully to this album. Um, as you can hear, uh, Frank work a room. Um, it's certainly a thing to behold. I would suggest from this album having a listen to uh, My Kind of Town and One O'Clock Jump. Have a listen to those two tracks and you'll get a fair idea of what he's going on with here. It's, it's, it's a thing to behold. It's just so much fun. This is entertainment at its best. So, yeah, well done, Frank. Um, you put on an absolutely glorious spectacle here. My second nomination in the live album category is a 1965 release by Ella Fitzgerald and the album's entitled Ella in Hamburg. Yeah, this is an absolutely stellar performance on this particular one. Um, this is a great example of uh, how Miss Fitzgerald takes ownership of the modern American songbook and filters it through her own unique vocal phrasing 
to produce a memorable experience. Um, this is just supersonic, this particular uh, live recording. And if you don't believe me, have a listen to her rendition of A Hard Day's Night. Um, Beatles for me, hit and miss. I don't own any of their particular music. But her rendition of A Hard Day's Night gave me a greater respect for the Beatles' lyrical content. She just does a really good rendition of it. it. It just blew me away. And you can hear by the audience when they're listening to what she's doing. They as well are absolutely just, they can't believe what they're hearing. So give it a chance. You won't be disappointed. Now, in the third category of most valuable LP, um, I've taken a bit of free license here. And um, yes, I'm going to give you two examples. The first one is a 1978 release by a David Fathead Newman, and the album is called Concrete Jungle. So why this one is, for me, uh, one of the most valuable in my collection, if not the most valuable, is because this particular copy, this individual copy here, I inherited from my late grandfather. Um, so when I was getting into jazz uh, a couple of decades ago and I was kind of post um, Coltrane, post Davis, post Mingus, post Ornette Coleman. Once I, I've gone through listening to those and I was kind of like still confused. Um, he in the my grandfather in the family was the person who was considered to have the biggest vinyl collection. He had a respected vinyl collection. So I used to sit with him on a Saturday afternoon listening to his new purchases um, or stuff that he thought that I might enjoy. And when he played me this particular album, and it was one track in particular, Distant Lover, um, the second half of that tune absolutely blew me away. So for me, for sentimental reasons, um, if I was to lose pretty much all my collection, this would be the one that I would mourn the most. Um, yeah, I love it for the reason of it invokes like such a great period in my life and spending some time with my grandfather. So yeah, this is my most valuable. Um, in the real world, <laughs> the cynical real world, um, apparently, um, I haven't gone through all my collection, but um, it, in terms of value, uh, uh, I have a 1979 uh, release here called Sophisticated Funk Orchestra by Sir John Roberts. Do love that cover and that's primarily why I've kept it. Um, yes, I bought this maybe 15, 18 years ago for under £10. Um, yeah, in terms of buying one of these in today's market, um, yeah, it's no, yeah, it, it's silly money for it. Um, for me, it's a one track album. Uh, the rest of it is a bit, yeah. But I like it for that one track, which is Do You Believe in Fate? Classic two-step R&B. But I, I wouldn't pay the prices that it commands now. And I was super surprised that was the case. So yeah, this is probably my most valuable individual item in my collection at this moment in time. But like I said, I'm not the sort of person who's going to go through my collection trying to find out what the value is of individual items. I bought things for a reason because I liked it, that was it, and I was willing to pay what it was for it at that stage. So yeah, that's my most valuable. Um, in the last category of albums that I would like to see reissued or upgraded to an audio file version, my first nomination would be The Soul Symphony by The Three Sounds. Um, if you see my YouTube channel already, you know my love for this particular album. Uh, this one is a, you know, the vinyl isn't the best. Um, it's kind of light. Um, this is a phenomenal, phenomenal body of work. It should be on 180 grams in a kind of like, you know, superior packaging. Um, I would buy it in a heartbeat. So yeah, if they can make that available, I would be super happy. Um, but my real nomination is a 1978 self-titled album. It's a prog rock one by a gentleman, gentleman called Yves Lafieri, Lafieri, I believe it's called. 
All right, I'm just going to try and show you what it looks like, the album. That's it there. That's the one I want. Um, I was introduced to it on this compilation album called If Music Presents, You Need This, A Journey Into Deep Jazz, compiled by Jean-Claude. Uh, if Records is a record store and label based in Soho, London. If you haven't heard of them before, check them out. They do some really good compilations. And Jean-Claude is a superb gentleman. Um, yes, uh, thank you for introducing that to me, Jean-Claude. Um, yeah, that's the album I want more than anything. I still hear it in my head um, as I'm just going through my day. Um, yeah, so I'll be looking out for that that particular one um so that wraps up my entries for today's uh, competition which is called again uh, show me your crown jewels um i hoped you liked my nominations and if you did or didn't please let me know in the comments section i'd like to thank again the vinyl community as well as 45 rpm audio file channel for organizing this competition and again i'd like to thank uh, mr henri junfil or Junifil for um, encouraging me to participate. Um, it was an absolute pleasure. So until the next episode, uh, Vinyl Community, my subscribers, my, you know, the general viewer, please look after yourselves and I will see you in the next episode. So until then, take care. Bye-bye.